Wouldn't it be great if something came along that helped you fix the stupid errors in your code? You know the times when you pass a string when you meant to pass an integer, or the time that you thought the return was a string when it was really an integer, or an array, or where it was a hash, not an array, all of that kind of stuff. Well, let's take a look at the promise of adding type checking into your Ruby code and doing that with something called Sorbet. So let's cast our mind back 20 years or even longer. Let's go back even further to my time in the 1990s when I was working at a software development company in Richmond, Virginia. And it was an old school, you know, software development company. We had pinball machines and popcorn makers and stuff like that. And the reason we had that stuff is because it used to take two hours to compile our Macintosh application to run those compile time checks. Zoom forward 10 years after that, let's say, and along comes Ruby and Ruby on Rails, and it's an interpreted language. And what that means is we don't have pre-compiling and compiling and stuff like that. We just run the code. And that's great. It's a lot faster, but we sacrifice that type checking. We no longer know what those parameters are supposed to be unless some clever software developer put a comment in there. So in other words, we never knew what kind of parameters those were supposed to be. And now 20 years later, our computers are faster and we're a little bit tired of not knowing what our parameters are and having any way of enforcing that. And that's what type checking is. And so Sorbet is this gem that adds type checking into your Ruby on Rails code. So let's push me down into the corner and zip over to the computer and take a look. All right. First, I'm going to take a pause and have a coffee. Sorbet, as it says, is a fast, powerful type checker designed for Ruby. And what the way that it does that is by adding, no, the way you add metadata into your uh, source files and Sorbet will use that metadata to do type checking. So be aware that every file that you need to type check, you are going to have to edit. And in some cases, you're going to have to change the actual code that you run. And you certainly are going to have to put in things like uh, method definitions in their metadata style. The good, that's the bad news. The good news is that Sorbet is, as they say over here in the right, gradual by design. And what they mean is that you can put Sorbet into your Ruby on Rails app, put the gems in and everything like that, and you don't have to do anything else other than that, and it won't do anything. So you can start from zero, and then slowly start type checking files as you need to. And you have a variety of strengths of type checking. So, you know, you can do it kind of loosey goosey or you can uh, make it strict or strong and see all kinds of errors and stuff like that. And you can do that on a file by file basis. So it's very handy for that, but do be aware that you're going to have to make a lot of changes. Uh, so if you're a solo software developer, um, I hope somebody's paying you by the hour. That's all I can say. So let's take a look at how we get this into a Rails app. And what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, because obviously you're on the other side just watching, I'm going to use uh, an existing app that I've got here. Uh, I'm going to uh, create a new branch. Well, it's let, let me show you. Well, no, I'll, I'll create, gosh, indecisive. I'm going to create the new branch here, sorbet it. I could have done some kind of clever sorbet. Uh, I can't use that because that looks like sorbet tit. <laughs> Sorbeting. Um, this is my application called Wrangler, Post Wrangler. And I'm going to be doing a massive honking big uh, tutorial about this app, which it, it's a, I'm going to show you what it is. It's a, um, Reddit post manager for uh, written in Ruby on Rails. And I'm going to put this up and you can have all the source code. I don't care. If you want to run your own Reddit post manager, be my guest. 
let's take a look at it. So it's, um, oh, how about me start the Docker container? You know, I'm doing all my uh, databases in Docker. I think I have a video I could put up somewhere for that. So let's fire up the Docker container and get into Post Wrangler. I'm going to sign out and show you. So you have this thing. It's a, you know, it's a management app for for posts. We log in using Reddit. And there we go. And we can do things like subreddit analysis. And, and, and so this is a seven Rails 7 app. While it's doing this governance in the background, let me show you what I've got here. So if we look at Rails version, we're I'm at 7.0.2.3 and Ruby version 3.1.0p0. Yeah, okay, I could update these, but you get the basic idea. We're doing this in Rails 7. And um, what we're going to do is go over to the adopting sorbet. Uh, gosh, that thing's taking forever. Um, adopting sorbet. And what do we need to do in our code? Well, first thing we're going to do is go to our gem file. And we don't need this stuff on the side. So I've got, you know, this is your pretty basic gem file here. Um, and I'm going to add these three lines that adds sorbet, the sorbet runtime, and tapioca. And tapioca is a another gem that's a bunch of sorbet tools. And that's, and that's interesting. If, if you uh, see another tutorial on the web or read one on the web about Sorbet and it says you need to do SRB init, um, that means it's an old tutorial because you no longer do SRB init, you do tapioca init and tapioca has taken over and is doing all the initialization and tools. Both of these libraries, by the way, Sorbet and tapioca are written by my good friends over at Stripe. Um, I could probably do some kind of clever Stripe link in, in the comments, maybe. Anyway, this is the post wrangler. See, it does this stuff, shows you the top post times for videos. You can do it for any subreddit that you want. It will show you the top post times. And you can say, okay, we recommend posting Friday at midnight. And you can create a post with a vid images and everything like that. So this app is going to be coming out. It's kind of irrelevant. I just wanted to show you that I have a fully working app that I'm putting Sorbet into. So I copied these files, our lines already. I did put them already into my gem file. And now I can say bundle. Not quite sure what the difference between bundle and bundle install is. If you know, put it in the comments. I don't think there is a difference. So here we go. It's installed the, the Sorbet stuff. And what does it say to do next? Next, there's two different ways to install it. This is like a combined static and runtime. I don't quite understand why they do it like that, but okay. And now we can do bundle exec SRB, SRB standing for Sorbet. And okay, and it says no Sorbet directory found, which uh, weirdly enough means that we've installed it properly. Now it says maybe you want to run SRB in it. And actually you don't. Because if we go over here, it says to run bundle exec tapioca in it. Not quite sure why those two things are out of sync, but anyway, run to run tapioca in it. And what that's gonna do is create this sorbet directory, some tapioca config, the tapioca uh, bin file. And um, just gonna move that up a little. And, oh, damn it. I don't have Dolly installed, but it's going to go through and create these RBI files. And these are the Ruby interpreting files. I can't remember exactly what RBI stands for, uh, but these are the files that Sorbet uses to figure out what your, how your code should be typed, checked. And not your code, but anything that you have in a library. So as you can see, it's going through the gems and doing that stuff. And um, 
I have to say, here's kind of where the problems begin right after installation in that it doesn't really do this properly in my opinion and you'll see why I say that now, I hope in a second um, and this is going to be a long video probably because I'm going to spend all a ton of time getting to clear as they say in Scientology running clear you know I'm going to get to the point where without starting on my code this thing runs without showing any errors it's weird that it doesn't do this out of the box I mean I know it says well you know we're supporting Ruby not necessarily Ruby on Rails come on I mean what 90 percent of the people who use Ruby are probably using Ruby on Rails and even okay maybe that number is only 70 percent that's still the vast majority of people who are using Ruby who would use this thing are using Ruby on Rails. I think they really should do something about getting it to work out of the box faster um, or better. So we're going to let this thing run and I'll be back in a second. Okay, it's done its thing. So the tapioca init is over. We're going to zip back up here and take a look. Uh, generated the RBI files, it checks those. These ones, for whatever reason, uh, including its own gem, have to be set to false because it's conflicting with DSL files. We don't know what that means. And it's set up this stuff here, and now it says what's next. We're going to run another generator, which runs Tapioca DSL. Uh, DSL, by the way, stands for Domain Specific Language. And this is to get Rails in there, though I thought it did it earlier. So we're going to do that now. And it's going to run off and it says loading the Rails application. Your database has to be working, by the way, at this point, because um, it does go out and do some stuff about connecting to the database. And now, so that's done. It's, as you can see, it's generated all kinds of Rails stuff, Action Controller active job active model all the active stuff now we sh it says type check your project there should not be any type checking errors now you've been watching me guys i have all i've done is install the gem and run the three lines of in configuration i haven't done anything else yet, you know and, and so it said there should not be any type checking errors so let's take this line bundle exec srbtc Bing, 198 errors. Not my code, okay? Now you could say, okay, maybe it's some of the gem files. So now we're gonna go through, I'm gonna run this again, 198 errors. So let's take a look at what these things are. Now you can see right off the top, let's take a look at this, direct message template, Close that, close that, open that, do that. Nope, wrong one. Oh, RBI. Uh, so, acts as tag of Elon. So, you can see this is the RBI file that it generated from my code. And it says it's got acts as tag of Elon. And yeah, it's this private collection proxy on line 272. It doesn't know what that is. If we search for private collection proxy, which is in all these files that are mine. Um, actually, it's this particular one we want, right? So it's included in these two files because presumably um, in my uh, actual file, direct message template, somewhere in here, yeah, I've got access taggable on, right? So it knew about it enough to put it in this, but it hasn't done it properly. So this is kind of the chore, first chore, is we're going to have to go through and create what I call, and what other people call, shims. And we're going to put those in the sorbet directory here. And we're going to create a new file, and we'll call this at, no, shims. So we're going to put it in a directory, 
x as taggable uh, taggable on dot rbi and we're gonna type this to, to strict just so we're starting off well and what we need to do if we go back and look at the error it says it doesn't know what that is it doesn't know what this whole module is right so what we're gonna do is define it now I don't know if this is the right thing to do um, there's act tag and then another exact same one called tagging So we've created those two modules and, and doing this somehow we'll see that these will all go. Um, so if I run this type check again, we're down to 190 errors because all of the uh, axes taggable are gone. Now we've got the same kind of issue. Um, we don't know what uh, the streams action helper is and so we have this issue of um, turbo streams also seems to not uh, get pulled in properly so we're going to create another file in here this time we'll call it turbo streams .rbi. now the other thing I forgot to mention is that there oh, there should have been a to do in there, but oh, there it is. Oh, I guess these anyway. The to do will list a bunch of things. These are things that it openly admits that it can't figure it out, and you'll see that some stimulus reflex stuff in there. Um, but for now, um, turbo streams. We're going. Eh, I'll do it again. Typed strict. And what was it that it couldn't find? It couldn't find this module action helper end. And that should get rid of, we had 190 errors. Now we have 126 errors. And we've got the pagey, which is what I use for pages, you know, paging, RBI. So typed strict. And we're going to module, again, I don't know if I'm doing, it seems weird that I have to do this, and maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Front end helpers, and there's another one, bootstrap extra. So, or run this again, and now we're down to six. So we're down to six errors, and all of these, as you can see, are in node modules. Excuse me. Now, that means that it's totally not my code. It's stuff that's installed by Node. Um, so I'm going to exclude or ignore Node modules. I'm not going to get into a competition about who's you know fixing that code. It's not mine. Uh, so let, let's stick with what's ours. Now we're down to one error, and that is device registrations controller. And this is particularly weird. It's put it in the to do RBI saying it didn't know what it was module device registrations controller, but it's actually already been defined somewhere else as a class. And that's because we subclass that for our registrations controller, like everybody else on the planet who uses device. So uh, what we can do, I don't think we have to do anything. I think we just need to comment it out because it's incorrect. We don't need that device registrations controller. And let's run it one more time and clear. All right. So we are now at the point where they said we should be after running this tapioca init and the DSL. Um, and it's going to, it's, you know, we run SRBTC and we have clear. That's great, except as you've seen, I haven't actually done 
any of my code yet. So let's move on and start type checking our code. And we do that, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna start with the models because I think models are easiest conceptually to understand. And I'm just gonna say typed true. I'm not gonna say strict right now. No, let's, no, typed true. So you have some different levels. Uh, let's take a look at what they say over here. You can, I saw that somewhere else, um, that you, you can go strong, uh, true, false, strong, and uh, strict. I should have probably kept that line up. Here it is. These are the static checks. That means that it runs, you run these before. And so you can totally ignore, or you can set it to false. I'm not quite sure it's difference between ignored and false. True means it will type check, but just not so strongly. Strict will do it, and then strong is kind of totally over the top. Strong is not recommended. Um, you will get tons of tons and tons of errors uh, because it will check deep into things and say these aren't typed. And strict is probably as high as you want to go. But for now, we're going to start with typed of true and let's run it great if i run strict great i always say if strict works leave strict in there application record as you can see these things these classes don't do anything so you know they do very little uh, kind of inheritance now here's the first one if i put strict on this i'll switch to a blank line if I put strict on there, okay, we get some errors because um, uh, we have something that we're using attribute accessor on. So we, it doesn't know what that is. Now it's, it's quite unfortunate. Again, this is, this is kind of what you have to do. Um, actually, no, it's, Yes, it is. And if I do a sig, which now we're adding the metadata. And that means it can return a string and it could be nil. And it doesn't know anything about that because we haven't extended the signature stuff into our model. And it can't use, doesn't know anything about initialize. So we're going to do, say it doesn't return anything. Great job. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we can get rid of that. Yeah. Attribute accessor is a bit of a special thing. So we've said it could return, it will return something that could be nil. It's just an instance variable. Current typed, I don't think this works with strict. Oh, it does. So you can go through and do all of your things. And we're gonna start with this one on true. Okay. Because we're gonna see some of the other errors now. These are again, I think, I would, in my defense, I would say these are not errors with my code. This is simply a configuration error, um, a configuration of Sorbet. Because it's saying there's no definition of paused inside of direct message template. Now, remember again, this is code that actually runs and is working. So, where is this paused? Paused is here. It's talking about this line here. And we want to say send after time unless the post, you know, put post the thing to Reddit unless we've said, wait, don't pause, we paused it, don't, don't send it. And how does it know it's paused? It's gotten a running status, which is an enum. And as you know, 
these enum constructs will create methods paused and running. Now the annoying thing is Sorbet knows about this. If I say paused, we can see in the direct message RBI this enum methods module. There's paused. If we go back to the other one, it's paused and running, right? Paused and running. But it's like it hasn't included this properly. So we say what's this? We can say, okay, direct message template has included that. Now that will work. Well, it doesn't, it just doesn't work in the Lambda, right? In, in, in these um, calls like this. So the other issue then is uh, we have has rich text body doesn't exist. Now this, as you know, has rich text body is part of action text. And so what's happening is that action text is not being properly associated to active record. So what I'm going to do is go down to shims here and I'm going to create an active record dot RBI. I'm going to type strict class application record and I'm going to include action text attribute, I think it's called, no, not attributes, there we go. So for whatever reason, action text wasn't properly included in active record. So a couple of not so niceties there. Um, I'm not, this one is quite worrying to me mainly because it points that maybe I don't understand what I'm doing here. But um, I believe, you know, we can, if we look at, at how, to, how to write Rails validations, you know, if we go and look at the, the guide, right, and we look for this, we can see it says to do exactly that. And that's interesting. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. So if I say send after time dot Interesting. So I have been doing that wrong. Unless so it should be DMT dot paused. I think. Let's see what happens there. There we go. And this is gonna say replace it with something else. There we go. Interesting. Well, there you go. You watched me uh, display my ignorance live on YouTube. So we're going to go through and we can add these uh, typed true. Was I true? In, yeah, true. There. We're going to run one more. And this is another kind of error. Again, this is kind of an error with me and kind of not. Um, I'm calling this 2FS on something that could be nil. So if we're going to call that, we should say, um, you know, we should say, oh, it must be. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be. It could be nil. So that has kind of found a bug in my thing. And I can say apply time zone, return true unless submission date, no, submission date dot present and time zone is present. 
So that kind of found a little bug there. And it's still going to say, okay, this thing is being called because it doesn't see that I've just said that it it's never could be nil, you know, but if it is nil, so what we can say is that it has to have a submission date at this point. There we go. So we can go through and we can add all of these um, things. I'm just going to see if there's any. You probably want to see me do a strict, right? I know your type. Let's see. Um, let's add a typed true here. These are a whole bunch of things, but it's again, potentially uh, a nil pointer could happen. So we're going to say it must. Let's go down to the 40s. I think it's down here. So subreddit must exist. And yeah, where's another subreddit? And Reddit account must exist. So that's kind of neat. Normally you would do that. Like in the old days, we used to write lines at the beginning of C++. Um, plus uh, code. So line 42. Oh, it's that. So I've just added all of these things. So it will break. Um, it will check that in in the pre-compile time, it will check that there is a subreddit whenever this is called. But of course, at runtime is when this error is going to happen, that maybe there isn't a subreddit. And that's, that's when the sorbet runtime things are going to come in. Now, broadcast 2. This is what it's complaining about now. Broadcast 2 does not exist on Reddit account, subreddit. Of course, it does actually. It's just not really figured that out. So we're going to go and go back to that application record. BI. Did I type it wrong? You guys didn't tell me. Active record, not active record, dummy. Application record. And um, we need to put the turbo broadcastable in there. So it's like turbo streams didn't really work, broadcast two. Um, That's interesting. How it should have done that. Let's change this to true. No. Okay. Where is broadcast to? Turbo Rails, Turbo Rails. Broadcast class methods, and the class methods are here, turbo broadcastable. Let's just see if I did it again somewhere else, because I have to do these sometimes a couple of times in different places. Okay, use include, not extend. So yes, you will find, again, you're, we're making these changes to, um, to get there. We haven't changed our code, as you've noticed. You know, we're just changing things so that uh, Sorbet can figure it out. 
Let's, for fun, do a, uh, a controller. Seeing I've already showed my ignorance. I'm not afraid to show my ignorance, you know. Wow. So here we go. What do we want to start with? This one, line 20 here. It doesn't like this because this could return a string and then we're doing something funny there. And, and to be honest, what we should be doing is dig, right? As long as whenever we're doing more than one deep, we should be doing dig. So that one should go, how many errors did we have? Nine, we should now have eight. Oh, we have six. The interesting one is current user. It doesn't know what current user is. Now current user, of course, comes from device. So we're gonna need to go to shims again. And it's like something is not quite right with device. But um, I'm gonna do application controller typed strict, not struct, class application controller, and we're going to include device controllers sign in out. I looked that up earlier, obviously. Now if we run this. I think current user, oh no, current user doesn't come from there. Oh yeah. I'm gonna leave that in because we might need it later. It's this one, I forgot. We need to create a whole device RBI because device just doesn't come through right. And the weird one is this, and I'm sure I'm doing this wrong, but I couldn't find any other way to get it to pass. And that is, it needs to know about the current user model, the current user method. It's like it, that never got figured out and I'm, I'm not quite sure. So where does current user come from, right? And that's because it doesn't actually come from anywhere, right? It, it's one of these dynamic methods because you know, your model may not be called user. Your model may be called, uh, you know, Filbert. Where's the current Filbert? Um, and so it seems like it has a little bit of an issue figuring out these dynamically created things from, from device. So, okay, there we go. We've done, done a controller and the controller is passing. And so I could do this strict, but you're gonna see a ton of errors there. Yeah, now 18 errors to get the strict going on undeclared variables and and uh, all of this does not have a signature so sig avoid you know um the uh those methods don't do anything inside of uh inside of a controller they don't return something so we have a uh, subreddit search that must be declared um and so Reddit search is, uh, it's an object. So it's, we want to, it's interesting. You kind of wrap it in this weird sorbet stuff. Um, that looks like that, which says, let subreddit search be the default, which is the default thing here that we're doing. But it's also a nullable type of subreddit search, you know, so we get rid of that. Now we should see some quite a few of these errors go. And it didn't like that at all. Oh yeah, it did. So again, subreddit is um, it's a it's a nillable string, so we have to define that somewhere. And subreddit here, it doesn't have a signature, returns a string. Um, I don't think subreddit actually returns anything because it, you know, these are all uh, controller methods. Again, you'd think it would handle controllers better out of the box. 
Um, it doesn't. So, yeah, expect to have a lot of work going on um, when you're adopting these, uh, your classes to Sorbet. Sorry, I'm, I'm typing and trying to talk at the same time. Let's move on. Uh, let me just, just tell you, you know, so I, I've talked a lot here already. Um, there's pros and cons here, you know. The pros is, well, anytime you have to go through your code and run something like this, you're going to catch errors, you know, like I did with that paused thing. You will catch some errors, and hopefully you won't introduce any errors by adding sorbet. And it is, I think, good for helping you clarify and simplify your methods because you don't really have any choice. And it might give you some increased, good or bad, code confidence, you know, like tests do. Those are the positives. There are some negatives, though. It's a lot of work to get, this is a fairly simple application. Um, you know, it's not legacy, it's, it, it's not years and years old. So it's fairly simple, but still it's a lot of work to get it going. I mean, we're talking several hours probably to get Sorbet fully integrated. It bizarrely doesn't really work very well with Rails and you have to do all these things that I'm sure I'm doing wrong. I don't really understand why I'm having to do them. I didn't want to have to read all about the inner workings of Sorbet. I wanted type checking, you know? Type checking on the surface is a very simple thing. You know, uh, and it talks about gradual support, but all I wanted to do was say my param, you know, m this method takes these parameters. That's what I wanted right now. And then check that when it's called, it used those. It doesn't do that as far as I can tell so simply. And it seems like you have to go another step above that into the pain in the butt sta stage to get it working. Uh, the documentation is not great for that. And um, I all, yeah, so that's a bit frustrating for me. I wanted m basically more simple type checking. And finally, I don't particularly like that you have to change your code for sorbet warnings. You know, again, this goes above and beyond what I wanted as far as a type checker. That's my little review. You know, um, it's pretty long. I'm gonna have to cut it down. You, know, you guys don't wanna see all this crap in here. Um, I've got another video up here that's also about uh, deploying in production and, and things like that. I've got some other videos. We'll see you around. I hope you enjoy these kinds of things. Let me know. I am a flawed developer, you know? I'm not perfect, so you're seeing me learn along with you. And after 35 years of writing software, I'm still learning because I'm so old now I forget. All right, thanks for watching. Talk later.